All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks for coming by on another Extreme Beginner Series video. We're having a great time here. We're actually going to be painting two beautiful paintings. Uh, the first one will be uh, some beautiful daisies. We kind of have a nice abstract kind of feel to it. It's a composition. We're not really so much worried about creating an incredible painting so much as how are we going to paint this uh, painting with the daisies. And we kind of show how you can modulate your colors, mix lots of colors throughout your painting to make sure everything harmonizes. We cover leaving lots of white uh, petals of the flowers of the daisies, and then yet also, too, adding some shadowing for shadow-type co uh, colors and tones in the petals of the uh, white daisies, and then repeating colors again throughout to give it a nice harmonious type of feel for the composition. Then we do our second uh, composition. Again, we're not out to create an incredible boat painting. We're here to try to really cover the basics of how are we going to get this boat in this beautiful scene here on a lake or uh, along the ocean painted. And we cover all the details here. Um, some of them are basically starting out with a good composition. Where are we going to place that boat that we have here? We cover how you get that perfect spot for your subject matter, whether it's a boat or a car or any kind of scene. And then we also cover the techniques we use. We're using kind of the glazing technique here. Getting lots of color on first and then going over with darker subsequent washes um, to kind of give the painting more impactful feel with the darker darks in there to kind of capture the dynamics of the light and darks on a painting. So stick with me here. We're going to cover it all in just a second. We'll get started with our flower painting first with a drawing, pencil drawing, and then uh, we'll keep working on through and then we'll work on the boat painting next. See you in just a second. Okay, we're actually going to keep moving on here. So we just saw the finished paintings. And again, we're doing the Extreme Beginner series. And this is kind of like... Um, Kind of like a part two, the first one we made, we did four paintings. We came out strong with four paintings, went over all the details you would need to kind of get started. And the whole kind of mindset was when you're just starting out, you're not going to be going for spending big money on all kinds of fancy brushes and paints and art gear and all that kind of thing. When you're just starting out, you just want to be practicing the basics, getting things down, uh, learning a lot. Um, of new methods and techniques in watercolor. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually focus in on some methods and techniques and some other helpful uh, information that's going to kind of keep you on a good you know, path towards uh, getting a really good start at watercolor. So in the first, um, we've done numbers of uh, Extreme Beginner videos, and you can look those up. You know, you just always type in Extreme Beginners on the YouTube search bar, and you'll see... Um, probably 10 or 15, 20 already that we've made, maybe even 30 or 40 by now. Um, but the first one or the first two we made were kind of really two hours, maybe two hour videos. So those were the longer videos were the ones where we really got into real granular detail on what we were doing. So this one's not going to be an extremely long video, but I do want to just kind of cover some things that are really going to be helpful. The first thing is I really, I always tell everyone in workshops and private, you know, teaching and things like that, and here on YouTube as well. Um, I'm using the, the Prang Oval 16 set. I think this is the great, perfect beginner set. It's very inexpensive. Um, you can find it anywhere in hobby stores, art stores, online, Amazon. Amazon has these. They're like, you know, $10, $12 maybe, you know, maybe $15. Depends. You can shop around and find them sometimes a little bit less than that. But, but just a great set of paints, and the reason why is... You just spritz it with a little bit of water, like this, with a spritzer bottle. And when you spritz this, literally two, three minutes later, you can start painting and get beautiful colors on your paper, and you're good to go. And then when you're done painting, you don't have to do anything. You can just let this sit, and that's it. Or you can close it up, and that's fine. Doesn't You don't have no special... Uh, care with these palettes and then the next time you're going to paint whether it's a week or two later or the next day or a month later two months later it's the same process you open up you open up your um, paints 
and you just spritz them again to just get them activated. And about two or three minutes later, the paints are perfectly activated and you can really get some beautiful colors. So that's why I really advocate this when you're just starting out in watercolor because, you know, once you start getting into more expensive and they're better paints, these are maybe, you know, you're not going to really probably, once you get started with watercolor, maybe after a year or maybe not even a year, a half a year later, you'll probably start buying some tube paints because they're better quality. And um, they'll last longer if you put a painting up in your house uh, and you frame it. These paints are going to, like, fade quicker. Whereas Windsor Newton or Holbein paints and some of the other ones that are out on the market, they're really good, better paints. Those aren't going to fade fast at all. They're going to they're gonna last, like, a lifetime with good-looking color and they won't fade as much. So these are more, they're good paints for beginners because you're probably not going to be so much worried about, you know, maybe selling paintings right away or putting them in galleries and things like that. So that's why it's a perfect set to, to start with. You're, you're just really worried about practicing, really, basically, getting the, the basics down. So the first thing I do is um, I usually arrange my palette a little differently than what it comes stock. This is what it comes with, you know, when you open up your box and you have your brand-new paint set, your Oval, Prime Oval 16 set. It comes like this, the colors. What I do is I rearrange it like this, and I put all the warms colors, the warm colors on the left, and then I start to put the cooler colors up here and then the blues over here on this side. This way when you're working, you'll kind of always know your oranges and reds and your brown and gonna, they're going to be on this side and the greens up here like this. And you always kind of know your blues and purples are going to be over here on this side. So that's why I do it that way. That's how I set up all my palettes. I have many palettes and they all get set up the same way warm on one side basically and cool on the other. So that's what we'll do here. So let's see if we can kind of how we can do this. Since I did spritz these with water, I'm probably going to set this one aside. And I think I have a new set with me uh, just on the other side of the studio. So I'll just uh, go on to the other side of the studio and, I, studio and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just went across the studio quick and I got a new set. Um, I usually stockpile five or six of these at a time. When I run low, I get extras. And then this is the way I set it up, usually all the time. And then the lid's over on this side. And these are excellent palettes, too. You can take the lid off if you want. So if you have a different way you want to set up your palette, you know, you can always take off your, your lid and remove it. And that works good, too. That's always a good option to have. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just start. Take I'll take this this right out like this, and this one too. And I'll just start taking these out. So this is what we want to do when you first get your set in. You purchase it. And what I do is I keep keep this the same way so I can just put it right back in. So I don't move it around and spin it around. I just keep it just like this. I take this one. I do the same thing. Black and white are up there. And then I just put all the colors over here. And we can even put them over here. It doesn't matter. We're just going to carefully put them back in in order of this one here. So we're going to match this one to this new one. Okay, one went around over the off the table. I'll have to go find that. All right, so what we'll do is I always like to um, double stick double stick tape these to the palette like this. So I just want to make sure I put this correctly. So I use double stick tape just in one spot so they don't move around when I'm painting. And I'll 
and then I just take the double stick tape like this, put it there in the center of the palette. And I think this one is like this, yep. And then I press both of these like this, right in the center where that double stick tape is, and this way they stay sturdy in there and they don't move around. And now we're just gonna match the colors, which is really simple. This one's pretty much here. This one is here. This one is here, third. Fourth, one, two, three, four. Yellow is in the five spot, one, two, three, four, five. Brown, six, after the yellow. Light green next, so we have light green next. Then we have the more cooler green up here. It's got a little more blue in it. This has a little more yellow in the green. So I call that a cool and a warm green. Then as we go over here with the blues, um, we have the cool, very, very cool green, almost like a, a turquoise -y green, like that. Then we have the, another, this blue has got a lot of green in it. Or more green, it's kind of warmer than the others. Or cooler, I should say. It's got a cooler look to it. And then this blue here is like a, a standard blue, like a French ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue. If there's those of you that follow colors a lot, you'll kind of recognize the name of the French ultramarine blue and cobalt blue. Those are like the two favorite blues a lot of people have. Prussian blue too, Windsor blue. Those are kind of popular blues you'll see in paintings that people are doing on YouTube or professionals out there. And then this one here is purple. And then this one here is a, I think this one here is over here. This one actually is, in, is there. This one's here. So that's a little bit more of a warmer purple over here. And then this is like a violet. Lavender kind of violet color. Getting to the red, toward the red color again. And then the white and the black. See? That's how we do it. We just... And then every time you buy a new palette, or if you just... It's kind of easy if you just plug in your colors when you run out of a color. Like if you run out of a color in this palette here, whatever one you're using a lot, you just take it out and you match it to a new palette and you take a new color out and plug it in. So you can plug these in as you go. So you buy a couple extra sets and then whenever you're running low on any one of the colors, you just take a new one out and you keep filling up your palette a few times. And then if eventually, if you want, you change out your palette so that you're, you have a newer palette where, you know, or you can wash these out and kind of scrub them out with a little bit of dish dishwashing soap and water, warm water, and these clean up real beautiful too, so that's fine, however you want to do it. All right, so we have everything all set now. New palette, so we rearranged our colors, so we have warm on this side, cooler colors on this side, and then we always leave our palette the same way. We have our new brush here. So if we leave our palette <clears throat> the same way, all the time, eventually you just you memorize it and you really don't have to think about it when you're going to grab paint for your painting. You'll just go over there and you're, actually you'll just know by feel where you're going to go to get your paints and you almost don't have to think about it. And that means you can be focusing more on your painting and what's going on here because watercolor dries fast. It's a fast medium, so the more you can be kind of on autopilot, so to speak, with your paints, that's the better. You'll, you'll have more time to focus and to handle what's going on on your painting. We're, we're, you know, if you, if you weren't keeping your paints in the same place all the time, 
then every time you go over to pick up a color, you're not going to be sure where it is. Oh, did I put it here? Or did I put it there? Well, I don't know. If you put them in the same place every time when you're changing out your colors in your palette, or if you, even if you buy another palette, a new palette, you'd, you'd arrange your colors the same way. This is a really big important thing with watercolor painting. And even if you go into oil painting or any other painting, if you can keep your palette the same all the time, that really will help you greatly with being able to focus more on your painting itself. So, okay, so we're, we're, we have our brush that comes with the set. That's our option if we want to use that. And then we're going to just start out with our pencil drawing. And before we do that, let's make sure we grab a pre-cut mat. <clears throat> and we always say when you have a pre-cut mat, the reason we use these really is so that if you want to, if, you, if the painting comes out really good, you can put a mat right on it and put it right in a frame and then you have a beautiful frame painting. You could put it up on the wall, give it as a gift, um, so forth. So, all right, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll take my pencil and just put a dot over here, over here over here and over here in the four corners of the mat. This way I know that I have to be working within these four points. And then I just go a little larger. So I make my I make my border just a little bit larger than the like that. And then what we'll do is we'll do a contour drawing really lightly. And I'm just going to do this by feel. Uh, I've been painting flowers a long time in watercolor. I really enjoy flowers a lot. So I'll just do some simple daisies and um, we'll just kind of go with the flow here. I'll kind of just pick out some random shapes. So I'll just start maybe here. I'll put one of the centers of the flowers there. And then I'll just maybe go up and And I'll just start going around here. And then maybe we'll have another uh, we'll have another daisy over here to the left. So maybe we'll run these petals of this daisy over to this one, like that. And I'm kind of doing these loosely. I'm not getting too worried about things. And maybe one more over here. And maybe we'll fade out over here on this side. Okay, and then uh, maybe we'll have a couple other just shapes of like leaf forms, but we're not going to really draw maybe a full daisy in there. We'll just kind of do some shapes like that for an indication of some more flowers over here. And then maybe the same thing up here, maybe just an indication of some flowers. And we can always add more if we want. And this is just a fun exercise. So 
Here we have just a couple quickly sketched, um, you know, we did a contour drawing light pencil line of some daisies. And what we'll do is we'll just slowly work into the painting, doing some a la prima painting, which means we're going to paint this all at one time. And uh, we'll create the darks in first. So we'll go in with our darks first. And then um, once our darks are in, then we can start maybe doing some lighter washes. And you can always... Um, Put in some some shadowing, a little bit of like um, shadowing like this, just to kind of to remind yourself when you're going to go in and start painting where you might want the shadows. So we'll just think, okay, we want some darks over here, maybe some darks up here. So kind of interesting spots of dark here and there. So that's all. Just trying to plan a little bit of what we're going to do here with our darks. And um, in our medium tonal values, we can work those out once we get our dark, darker tonal values in. So that's the key with watercolor painting, especially when you're doing a la prima, is we're getting our darks in first. And then uh, once we get that done, um, then we're in much better shape. We can kind of use that as our guide. If we get some darks in first, then we know what the medium tones will look like the medium tonal values, and then we know obviously the lights are going to be very light, just very little bit of paint, mostly water. So we'll cover that as we go. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll just do a little bit of fun um, painting now on top of this, and this is more or less a just a small composition of some daisies, and um, we'll, we'll make some beautiful colors here and mix it up and have a lot of fun doing it. So we'll be right back, and I always mention, if we're having fun so far, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, and uh, also, too, please subscribe. On the bottom right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see a button, subscribe. All that does is just, you'll make sure you're um, kind of with us, painting along every week. You'll see the videos coming out, and you'll be alerted on YouTube. When you open up YouTube, you'll see our videos um, on your screen to the side, over on the right side of your screen usually. And it'll just show you that we've made some new videos. So this way you can kind of keep up with us and here and, you know, check in and see what we're doing, what you might be like to work with us and see what we're painting. And that's about it. All right, so let's get us started in just a second. We'll start mixing some colors. All right, so we're getting started again. And um, I just have a few brushes I like to use that um, I buy the Princeton for my Extreme Beginner series. We like to buy the Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes. So they come in like maybe five or six um, brush pack. They give you some brushes like this. They also have some round brushes in that pack. So round br brushes like this. So you have a few rounds, a few squares like this, flat brushes. And, um, you know, I pick up some other synthetic brushes too. These are synthetic brushes. And the great thing about synthetic brushes is they actually don't hold too much water. So when you're painting, you have more control over how much water you're putting onto your paper because some of the better brushes that are made out of natural hairs, um, they tend to hold more water. But as you have more experience in watercolor, then you might want to have a little more water in your brushes. So that's why usually after you're um, kind of been working in watercolor a while, maybe a year, uh, depends how, you know, how you're progressing. But eventually you'll probably pick up a couple really like natural hair brushes, Kalinsky sable brushes, sable brushes, squirrel hair brushes. Those brushes hold more water, which means you can kind of, when you're working and you pick up some paint, you you can go a little longer and get a little more paint onto the paper because the hairs hold more water in them. Synthetic brushes hold less hair, I mean less water in paint, but they're good because then you don't tend to flood out your painting with too much water in paint. And sometimes you have a little better, you definitely have a little better control of your painting uh, if you're using synthetic brushes. So if you're new to watercolor, or even if you've been painting a while and you think, oh, let me try some synthetic brushes, you'll kind of see the difference as an experiment or just, you know, to see what synthetic brushes can do. And I'm sure some of you already maybe have used bolt brushes uh, quite a bit and kind of know the differences, but big, big help to have synthetic brushes in the beginning when you're first starting in watercolor. So I have these and um, we can start now. So what I'll do is I'll use this one. This is a round number eight Princeton uh, Neptune. So Neptune, I think, is the Neptune is the um, 
series of brush. So it's a Princeton brush, and it's in the Neptune series, which is, these are um, really good, nice point on there. So let's see how we can, we'll get some, so I'm gonna use some brown, some black. And when our palettes are new, they kind of bead up like this. You know, they, they bead the water, so there's beads of water. But once you use your palette a little bit, when it breaks in a little bit, you it won't do that. So I'll spritz the paints a little bit. Helps them to, we can get better paints out on the palette. So um, we're going to do purple, some red, lavender, red. Get a kind of a nice purplish red like that. That always looks good. And then we're going to mix. We have some. Let's get some greens up here. So we'll, we'll mix up some greens. Now greens are fun. What's really good about greens, you can just go with um, these two greens, which is a lighter and a darker green, let's say a cooler green and this is a warmer green then you can add a little bit of burnt umber, uh, brown to that and it gives you like a nice olivey green so that's a good color to mix up so we have some good colors already mixed up some nice good looking green with some brown in there to give that like an olivey color on this side over here and we'll leave this green maybe more fresh and looking more like this here just straight out of the palette and then we have some nice purple, purplish blue. I don't over mix it and keep mixing, mixing, you know, I kind of leave it. You can see it's not all 100% mixed, kind of looks good like that. Goes on the paper looking good too. So we have some greens. I think we're pretty good. Let's see how this works out. Let's get, and then we have some of that darker brown with the black. Maybe a little bit of orange and red. Let's try doing some darks. There we go. So I'm painting around the leaf forms. I'll put some green in there too. Like that. Then I'll take some water, just damp water on the brush, no paint, and take that mix we just made and I'll kind of move it around a little bit here and there. We'll paint around that leaf form coming from up there. And we'll do that. Then you can go in and get some other colors, maybe a little bit of that purple. And again, we're having some fun here. I might do a little bit of splashing here. Like that. There we go. Maybe a little bit of orange. And I'll start working over here too. All right, so we have some good darks in there. And then maybe up here, we'll do a little bit more darks like that. Maybe a little bit there. You can always sculpt a few leaf form shapes over here, like that, a little bit of green. Good time just to practice, have fun, do some splashing. And then I 
I'll add in some more colors like that. And some more green up here, like this. Okay, so we're using all of our colors, Just mixing them in there, greens and greens and purple, uh, red, green and red. Good mixtures. Then we go with some lighter washes like that, not too dark. We can also start going in here and getting some of our orange and yellow. Like that. So some of this over here is kind of we're just suggest, suggesting that there is some more yellow and orange here and there, just to kind of get the color, the same color uh, colors going throughout the whole composition. And then uh, we'll continue to we'll keep working like this. Get some red in there, pink, pink and red. I think I'm gonna change my water. So this is a good time for a break. Uh, you'll always hear me say take breaks. Try to take breaks when you can, um, just to kind of stretch. Um, refresh your um, your uh, concentration level. Um, maybe you'll come back and you'll look at your painting and you might see a few things that you want to maybe adjust a little bit. You might say, oh, I think I'm adding too much of one color in one area. I need to maybe add a few more colors in the different areas. So always remember when you take breaks and you come back, you're sort of stopping. And when you're kind of in that stopping mode and you're, you know, um, taking that break, then when you come back in and you're looking at things, you're already in that more thinking mode of just critically looking at your painting and seeing maybe what you might want to do different or adjust something. And that's helpful. That really is going to help you. So um, let's take a break and we'll come back in and we'll continue working around the rest of the uh, daisies here. And then we'll, we'll start another composition after this one. Maybe we'll do two on this um, you tutorial in this video we'll do two paintings and I'll change out the water here always good to change out the water this is getting a little murky now so it's good to have fresh clean water especially when you're doing these light washes like up here over here you know if you're going with that and over here if you're going with those really light washes best to have you know fresh clean water because this will affect those those washes they'll make them kind of muddy looking if if you have too much um, uh, muddy looking water. So your water is actually a big part of keeping your colors. If you're making darker color mixes, the, the water getting murky and muddy looking isn't a problem because you're already mixing dark colors. So you're not really going to see too much. But if you're doing light washes like this 
and like this and like this and like this and like this, uh, you'll see kind of a muddiness to those colors. You can get a more of a beautiful transparent look to your colors if you have clean water. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change out the water and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to keep working here. Let's work some more around these petals up here. So maybe we're going to keep these a little fresh, clean water. A little bit of green. And just trying to then we'll go with some more of those greens over here. And you can even add some blue to make the green a little dark, darker. And some brown, and some green, some blue. And I'm just mixing around the colors. Okay, and then if you paint over a pedal by accident, not a problem, just lift it up quick. Mix up a more of a a yellowy green. This could be interesting. It gives you a little more of a um, kind of a lively green. So you can add in some more lively looking green colors with a little more of that lemony yellow kind of feel to it. That can spruce up your green mixes if you have some green mixes that you might think need to look a little more. Uh, um, exciting or something, you can just add some color, some gold, some yellow. All right, we're getting there. So again, the key is to have fun, mix lots of colors, you know, try to definitely 
Get some of those really interesting leaf forms of the daisies in. Looking fine. Good color mixes. And sometimes you can add a little bit of that really cool blue there. And I added a little bit everywhere. So if I add a new color and I introduce a new color, like a pretty strong color like this, I try to get it a little bit everywhere around the painting. Just so it kind of harmonizes with everything. And I think we're doing pretty good here. We got lots of colors on here. Splashes darks, lights, so we have good darks, we have really, really light washes too, good colors, All right, and the, the key here is let's not, let's not just try to take everything and, and kind of make the flowers look pasted, cut out and pasted on the paper. Let's blend in some of the leaves, the, the petals. Sometimes I'll use the tissue or paper towel just to uh, lift up sometimes if the paint gets a little bit out of control or it starts to flood into spots that I don't want it to. So that's always good. You can do that. You have a tissue always in, on hand and if you see anything starting to flood into another spot you don't want it to, not a big deal. You just take the tissue quick and blot up the, the paint and the water and then you're back and business working on the painting and not fretting too much. So we are, maybe we'll get a few more of these. I'm just adding some really, really lights to the uh, petals. All right, I think that's fine. So that is our first composition completed. And uh, we can always take a look and see how it looks with some matting over the top. Let's take a look. We can use this white mat like so. And that looks pretty good. We can move it around a little bit. And there's all kinds of different color mats you can buy. Um, looks better with this. There's also blue mats, green mats, you know, any any type of color match you can find. Off-white um, mats, like different, very, very light. I think watercolors usually, in my opinion, I've done a lot of framing over the years. I find that watercolors look really good with like lighter looking mats. Once in a while, a darker matte might look okay, um, like a uh, dark blue or maybe a dark brown. Depends on the colors in the painting, but for most paintings, you can't go wrong with like a lighter kind of matte, like a white, off-white. 
this is okay for maybe a landscape if there's a lot of gold. But uh, I have a lot of different mats. I'm going to try to set up a little station by my work table here where I can have all my mats here so that I can try different colors so we can kind of see what they look like with different color mats. But for right now, we're going to move on here and uh, we'll start another painting. Uh, composition and we'll do something a little different and as you saw from the beginning of the uh, uh, video we did cover the two paintings we were going to do so we'll continue on with the next painting all right we just uh, changed out our uh, paper so now we have some fresh paper we're going to start our boat painting next and uh, we'll have a really fun time. This is going to, again, be a, more of a composition. We're not, we're not out to paint like the greatest, world's greatest painting at this point. You know, we're, if we're just starting out in watercolor, we're going to try to just have some fun, enjoy the process, kind of talk about all the different steps we uh, uh, take to get to the, the work that we want to see happening on our paper and uh, our painting. So let's uh, get started. So, again, we usually always take our mat, pre-cut mat, this way, if the painting comes out good, we can just put a mat on it and frame it, and we're happy. And let's start out. We take the paint um, pre-cut mat, we put it down on the paper, and then we take our pencil here, and we just put the four dots right in the four corners here. Very light dot, barely visible, just so you can see it. And then what I'll do is I'll make a light pencil line about an inch around the dots we made here like this like that so I just did it super light and you can probably see it I have a better light now I just purchased a new light for my studio here so this should really look good now even when I do a very light sketch you can probably see the line and We'll use some tape. This time we're going to tape around. So we'll tape right on the pencil line we made. Like that. Same down here. And one more. So we just tape around, make a border around our composition. Good, good. All right, now let's kind of keep it simple. Let's make a, we'll put a boat maybe right here around the lower quarter of the um, composition, the rectangle here. So we're always thinking of our, we're always thinking this is the rectangle. We have this area to work in and this is the only area we have. How are we going to, put our subject matter in here so we're going to create a good looking boat here where are we going to put it well uh, usually um, if you see like um, in many books about design for watercolors you'll always notice they always usually give the the cross de design of breaking the painting down into four 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 parts like this so if you're going to put your subject matter you're always safe going either here, 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 or here. So you're, if your main subject matter, let's say you're the real focal point of your painting. So if you want to put a bow or a f some flowers, well, flowers maybe we're going to fill up the whole rectangle with our flowers. But I mean, if you want to make like a bow or a car or maybe a house or something like that, a castle, whatever it is, if you want to make it kind of small and then have like mountains and fields and things, your best bet is you could put that house or that castle or um, that car or something or that figure or figures, you know, in or an animal, let's say, or anything like that, or birds or any kind of animals, anything you want to put. If you put it in the four corners here, one or one of these, you can pick any one, it'll tend to look good, the composition. So we'll try that theory out, roughly speaking. We do the cross like this, and then we say, all right, we're going to do the boat here. So we'll, we'll take our boat, and I'm just going to make a the 
boat will be like this. Then we'll have the reflection of the boat in the water, just kind of outlined a little bit so we don't forget to put that in the water. And then uh, we'll have the cabin Okay, so that's the boat in the cabin. There. I want to make that a little bit more on an angle like that. That looks better like that. Okay. And if you have a problem with your design or your, or your drawing and you say, you know what, something's not looking quite right, you can always take your eraser, do some lifting up like that. Once we paint everything in, you're not going to see it. I think I made the cabin too big. The cabin needs to be smaller here. I made it too large for the actual uh, boat. So just to, I kind of thought that would look a little better like that. Okay, good. And we're not going to get too fancy with the boat. Maybe we'll put one fancy detail stripe along the top here. And that should be good. Maybe a little bit of... color there too. Alright, so that's really a boat. And we're going to have some water and maybe we'll have a little bit of land back here. Maybe we can make the land a little, like three quarters of the way up. A little bit past the halfway point even. That's what we can do. That'll be better. So let's make some land across here. So we'll make the land over here. And um, we'll make some hills for the land over here. So this is just going to be some interesting hills and things. Some trees and bushes we'll have over here, but we're not going to make a real major production out of this. We're just doing a composition here just to have some fun, kind of see how we can use our brush, our paint, our colors. So we're actually working our skills as a watercolor artist on this, and we're not so much trying to make a perfect painting with a boat and water and things like that. We're going to talk about how we're using our colors and our brushwork and things like that. That'll be more important. And then, of course, we talked about our composition here. We want to make sure we're kind of putting that boat in a good spot. So here's good. Here would be good. Or if you want to make it different and put the boat up here and up here or here up higher, then it changes the design. You probably wouldn't have mountains up here if you're going to have your boat up high in the picture. So a boat painting like this looks better, I think, with the boat sitting lower in the picture, in the uh, rectangle, just for a kind of a note um, to self on that. All right, so good. We have our pencil drawing done. We can get right in and get our paints going here. What I'll do is... I will take some water, and I'd like to just... It's good to clean up the palette, because we used some colors that we'll use again, but we kind of mixed a, a lot of different mixes in that flower painting. So we're better, we're way better off just, doesn't have to be perfect when you wipe up the palette, but it, you know, you want to get most of the colors off there and you just dip your paper towel or napkin. It's better to use a paper towel to do this type of thing, cleaning up the palette area like that. So there we go, much better now. 
and then let's uh, let's use our square brush here. We have a good good size square brush. Maybe let's paint around the boat and get in some of the paint in the water first, and then see how that kind of works. Maybe we'll paint around it, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. We're going to kind of do the alla prima method too. We're just going to paint everything at one time. We're not really going to do any glazing technique here. We're just painting over the whole page. Let's just kind of go as we go. Let's get some interesting colors for our water. Blue, that's more of like a darker blue, lighter blue here. Let's get some of that green in there. Then we'll get some brown mixed here. Brown and orange. And then some of the blues. So we'll kind of make a muddy blue green. That'll sort of make an interesting look. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just pick some things up here, some paint, just some paint. And let's go across here like so. And just kind of flow the paint across the page like that. Here we want to leave underneath the boat white because we're going to have a white boat here. So we want to leave the reflection of the boat white underneath. So that's how you'll see me at this point. Try to leave that reflection under that boat, the white paper. And then I carefully paint around the boat. And it's warm in my studio, so the paint's drying fast. So that's why I'm trying to work pretty quickly here. And I mix plenty of water. And we're going to go over with more washes on top of this wash, so you don't have to be perfect with this first wash. Because we're going to do other things on top of that wash. And then We'll start to get into some greens up here for the hills. So maybe we'll just go in there like this. We'll make those bluish green, the hills back here. They're in the distance, so they're not going to be too bright for the colors. And let's just kind of leave it like that. And then more blue for the sky color, maybe. Maybe we leave the sky kind of like this. Just crossing the, like that. And then maybe a little touch of orange along the sky horizon line like that. Blend that in. And we'll make things more, we're going to add more detail to everything, but this is sort of like the glazing method. Pretty much like the glazing method we're using. But I didn't cover the boat. I wanted to leave the boat like this, the white paper, because we're going to go in now, get some of this blue, maybe some of this brown, and then we're going to go in there and do this along the bottom of the boat, and then just do a little bit of that, kind of tie it in together. The uh, colors, the blues, and that looks good. All right, now we have this, we'll use our round brush and we'll, we'll just get some, uh, 
windows in here. Two windows is fine. One back here. And then we'll do another one up here with an angle on it like that. You could take a little bit you could take a little bit of darker brown and like some blue. And we make a little darker up top like that. That looks good. And there might be a little bit of a darker bit there. So we could add a little of that dark there too. Just let things happen, don't worry about it. If you think you don't want that spot there, you can lift that up a little bit. Then let's go in, we'll get some cadmium red. Kind of looks like a cadmium red, like that. And we'll do a little stripe on the boat up here. And we just go across a little bit at a time to get follow that pencil line, like that. And you can even do a little bit of red in here in the water too, just a tiny bit and not maybe everywhere, just a few spots, like that. And there we have it, we have the boat. We have the um, reflections of the boat, the white reflecting into the water a little bit. Let's work on the, let's go up here while this dries. Let's go up here and work in the mountain area, but let's take a quick break because we've worked quite a bit already. We've gotten the glazing, we'll call this the glazing technique for the most part. We got that first light wash over everything. Now we're going to go over with some darker tonal values, some darker colors to kind of round out the painting, make it look a little more interesting versus just leaving it this one light tone, or this light tonal value here. Now we have the fun part. We can go in and add some darker bits of paint here and there, make it look more exciting. So we'll do that next. Let's take a quick break. It's always good to take a quick break. Get yourself relaxed a little bit, get that concentration level back a little better, and um, we'll be uh, ready to paint in just a second. And I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe right, right on the right-hand side below. And basically all that does is just uh, alert you to the um, new paintings that are coming out here on my channel, so you'll always be up to speed. We're usually creating new content every week, at least one or two new videos every week. So you'll be able to uh, see those coming into your YouTube channel. So when you open up YouTube the next time, you'll see our new videos coming out on the probably right-hand side of your screen when you're opening up uh, YouTube. And then at that point, you know, you can check it out and see what we're doing. Hopefully you're going to keep joining uh, us back here over and over again every each week and uh, week after week and month after month and even year after year because that's how we'll get good at watercolors is if we continually practice the fundamentals of watercolor and that's all we have to do as long as you're doing it over and over again it just becomes habit after a while and you won't even really think about it you'll just be painting and having a really good time of it and really being able to accomplish really good paintings so let's continue to work together i'll just take a quick break and then we'll get started again okay so let's get Back into the painting here, we're going to let this continue to dry. The boat's still drying a little bit here around the bottom of the boat in the window area. So let's do a little bit of work up here in the distant hills. So in the distant hills, we're going to, we're going to take some green and brown, make like a uh, olivey green. And we're just going to take our brush, our round brush, and just sort of maybe, you know, kind of drag it along here on the top of the hills. So this first hill up here is going to be a little darker. We'll add a little more brown to that, maybe, like that. And this is the fun of it. We're getting in some, that first area of mountains and ground and hills over here. And as long as we keep it level across here. You could even put a piece of tape across it if you want. That's something you can do. You can take tape and put it across. paint along the tape. That'll really give you a good sharp line across the horizon line of the water. 
and then you can just lift it up carefully. It's got to be good tape though, otherwise it'll peel up your paper, especially if it's a touch damp. That might be a touch damp here, a little bit, but I'm not sure. I don't think it is. I think it's pretty dry. And then we can always a few spots here, like this. And you can add a little more, maybe a little more green there, darker green with maybe a little bit of blue and brown. And then this could be the, some of the trees up here. A circular motion with the brush. And just here and there, a little bit of indications of trees. It doesn't have to be anything too definite, just some indications. The focal point is the boat. So these things in the back, like the trees and things, and shrubs and whatever's back here, doesn't have to be anything too important or anything like that. We're just making an indication that there is some forest back here and some trees. Then after we do that, we're going to let that dry because we'll go We'll go with another little bit of hills behind these darker trees we just created, but we have to let that dry 100%. So now we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to move back over to the water over here, where we're going to take some blue and green, touch of brown just to gray it down a little bit, some green maybe, blue like that. And then let's get in some choppiness to the water in the fore foreground of the water. So in the closest areas to us, we're going to want to just make some some of these chopping bits of brush strokes like that. And just take your time doing them and don't worry. You can do a few going through here too. Not many through the boat area though where the reflections of the boat are. We don't want to disturb that area. That kind of looks good. We don't want to do anything further there, really. And then I'll make it darker down here at the bottom of the painting. So the darker darker colors are in the foreground, the closest area to us, which is right here. And then as we go back here, lighter. And then eventually, we don't see much at all. We just kind of, that's it. So let's kind of see how we do that. Choppiness here a little bit in the water. Darker, closer to us here. And then lighter back this way until we it fades out. And then it fades out and you don't see the, the uh, little small waves and things happening in the water. Back over here, because that's kind of more mellow. And this is more of the details here by the boat in the foreground here. All right, so that... Looks pretty good. Let's change out the water one more time. And this is good to change out the water because we're going to do a light wash of purple by these trees. Now, since we're doing purple, we're only going to use a little bit, but we will put some here. Since I'm using purple back here in the mountains, 
I want to make sure I use a little bit here and there in the foreground, even over here too. Okay, good. Just as long as we get a little bit of that purple. Now, we're going to take that light purple and just go across here like that. Blend it right in like that. And that, that'll be fine. That'll kind of blend right in with the tops of the trees as long as there's not too much water in there. So all you have to do is remember just a light, little bit of water and paint for your purple mountains back here. And you keep it um, uh, light, not too much water. Because then if it's too much water, it'll it'll disturb the green we just put on those trees there. So as long as you keep it pretty much light, not too much water, not too much paint, it'll be fine. And you let it dry, of course, that green, those green trees that we created. And then here on the boat, we want to have some of that reflection of just a little bit of the colors of the water. So we're going to put some of that reflection there of the blue and the green colors. But you can leave a little bit of, I would leave a little bit of white paper, but not a tremendous amount. So it kind of looks good if you can blend that color A little bit and maybe a little gold maybe a touch of orange on the boat a little touch of orange give a little bit of that warm feeling And then we could even clean up a little section here, like this. And put a little more of that orange color. So we'll add a little orange. And then this can warm up the, the washes a little bit. Since we have so much blue and green, adding that little bit of orange over the top of the uh, water area with a little touch of orange here and there, adds a bit of warmth to it. And then I just take a damp brush, take all the paint off the brush and then clean out or you know dry off all the water on the sponge and then just kind of just gently maybe blend in that orange just a little more but I think not too much just a little bit and I think we have it maybe a little bit of lemony yellow And I think that looks good. So we've captured the really powerful method of getting our composition right from the start, getting our boat just in that perfect spot, which is the lower left-hand corner of the painting. And then from there, we're just m making sure we have good distance going back with the water, then the mountains, and the sky. So this really does look good. So this is a fun painting to do. Lots of depth, good colors too, the sky colors, the blues and greens of the water. The boat looks really good. And we can peel off our tape carefully. And it always looks good when you tape your paintings. This way you have a border around it. It looks much better. And 
That looks pretty good. And then we can even see what it looks like with a mat. So we can go over the top like that. Again, I'd, I prefer white, very light mats like that. Something like that. This is too stark white. It would Off white looks better. This is too stark white, but it's the back of the mat, so it's not really... That's just straight uh, white. But that looks pretty good. So sometimes you can move the, you know move the mat around, see how it looks. But I think it looks good like that. Originally how we had it, just like that. All right, so thank you so much for coming by, painting along with me. We're learning a lot of great new things with watercolor here on Extreme Beginner Series Paintings and tutorials here on my channel. We're going to have fun. We're going to be back in just uh, next week. We'll be back. We'll do some more uh, compositions and paintings. We'll cover more techniques and methods in watercolor, making sure that you get all of those methods and techniques week after week and month after month here on YouTube so that you're able to um, uh, learn the, the proper way to paint watercolors and the real key things that are going to help your paintings improve. Um, sometimes bad habits can really lead to uh, having a hard time with painting watercolors because it it's not an easy medium to learn. So if you have the right um, practice um, paintings as your, you know, compositions as you're going in the beginning, you'll, you'll have much more of a fun time painting in the future with your watercolors because you'll kind of be able to avoid some of the pitfalls and you'll have the techniques and methods to um, help you as you paint uh, your paintings going forward. So great to have you here. Enjoy the watercolor journey, everybody. Have fun, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.